What's going on, Tool Groupies? So far, this is how my morning started. Got a call at 5 a.m. This is a Fulton ICS 50. Big old boiler. It's an industrial boiler. We've been having problems all morning. I'll show you exactly what it is. This is a nipple right here. It runs on the inside of the chambers where the basically the stainless housing is where the boiler fires up, heats up water, all that stuff. The water itself is on the inside, which I'll show you here at the end. Now, it boils all that stuff up and enables it to produce steam and all that kind of stuff. You know what a boiler is. Well, it was leaking right around where this nipple goes in at. You can see steam coming out of it. After a few minutes, maybe two minutes, you could also see steam coming out from where the insulation goes to. You see there's gaskets inside there. It's a manhole gasket where you can put your hand in, check out the water, look at the boiler, inspect it, all that stuff. Well, it was leaking on the outside of here and it was leaking on the outside right here. So there's a problem here somewhere. Now we pulled the nipple out, we tested it. We didn't see nothing you know, extravagant that would cause it to leak like that. So it could very well have some type of crack in the actual housing itself. We're hoping like hell that's not the case. Because if it is, that is a major problem, which means a major repair. So we're going around and unchanged the little rubber gaskets that go inside here, and that go upside here, and here, and then we got one more right here, and you can probably see the steam coming right out of it. You ain't got a good enough leverage on something, get a bigger fucking wrench. That's how that works. Big beast right here comes in handy when you need all kinds of leverage for jobs like this. And everybody says who needs an adjustable wrench. This guy. We got some... Uh, new gaskets and things to put on it. it takes these little rubber gaskets right here okay this is what we're doing here we're going to go through the top as you can see this is the top half of the bowler here and we're going to take all this apart we have got this set up to where whenever you put this in here if you drop it you're screwed because it's going to go straight down into some boiling hot water you have to drain the bowler get down in there and get it which we've already got it drained it's just the point that you know this is how it works so whenever you get this out, you gotta take this fastener off, and then you gotta take those arms off there and try to hold on to that threaded shaft and then wiggle this out of here. It's like a little puzzle because it's egg shaped. You gotta flip it around, pull it forward, drag it out. You know, so you wanna make sure you're not gonna drop it. Now, see, there is steam coming out. There is water down inside there. And it's in between this that we got a problem because the steam is boiling up inside there so it could very well be cracked on this inside housing somewhere. The weak got probably six inches here. And the issue is it's leaking around where the insulation is, which means there's something going wrong. We're trying to find out, but that's why I said I do industrial repairs. I work on commercial machinery, boilers, air compressors, water heaters, other commercial machines on top of doing automotive repairs, things of that nature. Getting ready to put a gasket and everything on this, fix it up, clean it up real nice, and try to figure out where it's leaking from. Unfortunately, you can see the steam condensation building up there, leaking around the sides. When this thing's been fired up, it's been leaking right around the inside here between the insulation and where the water is. And this is gonna be a gigantic pain in the ass if uh, what we're working on don't fix it. We've done replaced this nipple here that runs into it. We put a nice heavy duty union on it, heavy steel instead of a Chinese shit that was on here and uh, got all that fixed up in case that was what was leaking because it has steam coming out of it. We put new gaskets on the inside here. This is a perfectly good use of the Nebo flashlight. In this particular situation, it's not too heavy and where this is a round area, if Nebo is watching, please make some kind of light that has a round backside to it that's magnetic so that people who work on boilers and things like this can use them. But in this particular situation, this little Nebo, the Leo, is working for what I need it to do. 
As you can see, it lights up the area pretty well for what I need it for. I also used it for this big hole up here. And now I've got the part out that I was working on without dropping it down inside this thing. So kudos to my local CarQuest Auto Parts stores here in Eastern Kentucky for selling the Nebo products. insulation I figured I would add to it what we have done. Like I said, we fixed all those gaskets. We got one more to go. I did put a brand new union on this thing. It is the heavy cast. We've also got the new nipple on it. It's nine inches long. It goes into the inside. We had to reassemble all this stuff here and take apart all these copper lines. You know, this is essentially the type of stuff that, you know, the flare nut ratcheting wrenches would be used for if, uh, you know, that Travis is trying to design you know they can also be used besides you know going into the deep sea and oil rigs and all that because there's forklifts here there's airlines here there's bowler lines here there's heavy duty machinery upstairs that uses flare nuts to get a lot of this stuff off and they would come in handy so you know that's why certain people might like a good ratcheting wrench if they can actually invent a flare nut wrench that holds up under pressure so we'll see how it goes well, so far, it's part two of boiler repair. And unfortunately, we've replaced some things on this and it is not fixing the problem. So it was not the gaskets and it was not this nipple. You know, it was just to be precautionary. The owner said, go ahead and do it because it was the cheapest route. Because the sail on the inside is potentially cracked. And if that is the case, uh, there's very limited options on what we can do to fix it going to be a very 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 busy day but that's what i do okay the final update of the day so far been at it most of the day trying to get an older boiler going and another smaller brine boiler going got them running for now so i had to call a company that deals with this and we've used them before they're uh, called ware w-a-r-e so the very first Monday of 2020 was one hellacious Monday because boiler went completely down. So we're going to be repairing that today. It's Tuesday morning, really early in the morning. You know, I got some guys coming in. We're going to take the thing apart. We're going to see where the shell's cracked on the inside of it, get it fixed back up. And as you can tell, it is snowing. So let's get started. Needless to say, we got another leak. See? Well, Monday, damn sure carried over into Tuesday. Sitting here chit-chatting about what we needed to fix, and then, boop! Some pipe decided to volunteer itself. Ah, uh, damn if we ain't having a bad day. So, I was going to try and put a secondary phone or a camera of some kind around the boiler to show you all exactly what and all was going on, but... Oh, it's been a hell of a day since 5 o'clock this morning, and it's already like 5.30 this evening, and yeah, glad today's over with. But I'm going to show you an update so far. Now, generally, you can take the outside shell completely off of these machines, but because of this type of boiler, you'd have to take everything on and off. The pipes off, the box off, the wiring off, everything off. Instead, as you see, what you essentially do is you take a grinder and you cut a square around it because it was leaking here originally okay so we knew the spot it was leaking at and then it went 
uh, to the top side first, to this bottom side second. It was leaking all out around it. We assumed that this was what was leaking, so we took it out, we replaced it, put a new union on it, new pipe on it, everything, pipe dope, all that good stuff, and it was still leaking like a sum bitch. That's whenever we called in the war company, and they deal with boilers professionally, and the reason that being is because they're certified. They have insurance. They have all the state certifications. You know what I mean? They're the ones that are supposed to do it because of all that. So we got a guy with 40 years experience, really good feller. I mean, these, these guys was most professional as you can be. I won't say their names, you know, but M and Z, they know who they are if they ever cross this video. They cut everything open and they started chiseling a little bit at a time because this is some really hard ass insulation. I mean, they had to take a chisel and a hammer just to get it out. And once they got to the back side, you know, you couldn't see a hole in it or anything like that. And this boiler is specifically designed. You see, there is an interior shell. All right, that shell's pretty thick. Then it has tubes that run up and down the middle of that and then the outside you've got a thin like tin shell on the outside so if you got a leak on one side you know it's pushing that steam and it's pushing that water and everything you know what i mean whenever it's boiling and it can be leaking from anywhere which makes it really problematic to find and the only way to really do it is take the whole shell off or start cutting sections here cutting sections there until you find what might potentially be the hole and that is very very expensive essentially in some cases you can just buy a whole new boiler and you know this thing don't want to have to do that so essentially whenever we was looking at it we got down to it we told them what now we changed and everything and they said they had a theory as to what happened more than likely we changed the right part that it could have been leaking around the threads or something and we had not seen it whenever the boiler was shut down on like saturday this place shuts it down at 12 it don't come back on until monday morning at five so it could have been leaking over the whole weekend and it could have got this all wet down through here in the insulation and when it gets hot the boiler pressure builds up it starts steaming because it takes it two, maybe three days to dry out. So it was steaming all over the place, and on, but on the off chance, we didn't want to run this thing and it'd be a danger to anybody. So that's whenever we done what we could and then stopped and then got the guys with the certifications in here to do it. Now they did say that if it's leaking water at the bottom side, like it's dripping water all around it, shut it off instantly because that is dangerous. That means you do have a leak that's going all the way through it. Now, they got things called boiler compound that they put in these things. And if you put different types of boiler compound in it, it could mess up the, I guess the chemistry of it, you would say. And it could make it erode away on the inside faster than normal. So you gotta test the pH levels and all that to make sure it's right too. But essentially, what's gonna happen is we're gonna run it for like two or three days and we're gonna let this stuff dry out as is. And if it dries all out and it stops, then we're good. But if it continues to keep steaming, then there's a good possibility that there could be a minute pinhole somewhere. And that little pinhole could turn into a big problem. So we're hoping after three days of running this that it'll all be dried up, that it won't be steaming no more, and then they can put more insulation in it. I've got their number, I'll call them and talk to them about it, you know what I mean? If anything pops up, they'll come directly here and they'll fix it up, whatever the circumstance may be. But they're gonna come back, like I said, in a few days, check on it anyhow, and they're going to go ahead and retack where they cut this out at, and they're gonna fix it back up, they're gonna put brand new insulation in it, and they're gonna call the company, make sure they got the right amount of stuff, the right kind of stuff, so it's all fixed back like new. And if anybody ever has any boiler problems, I'll tell you this much, we have uh, contacted these guys before and used them. War, if you have any problems, they might be expensive, depending on if you have a big business or a small business, but if you want professionals, one was a certified welder, really good guy. The other one, like I said, had 40 years of experience and he knew exactly what he was talking about and he was trying to save us money. He was telling me what I could do that they didn't have to do so they wouldn't have to charge us for it. If I could take something apart or like this, when they bring this patch back and everything, they're gonna put all the packing in there and then we can tack that up there ourselves if we want to save us money. So they are really good professionals. They will save you money and you just can't find a better group of guys that appreciate the work that they're doing and you know, they talk to you like people. So what had happened, I guess, were, you know, things were tinkering around with the boiler and whatnot. We was having to test it, test the pressure on it, test the lines. And whenever you run one boiler to the other and they got return tank lines, that's basically where all the heat and the steam and the water and all that stuff, it returns back to the tank. It recycles itself. It goes through the system again. You know, so we was looking at it, trying to figure out what the hell broke because you couldn't see nothing. And it ended up being the return line that went to some of these hotheads over here. So we had to trace it down and it's really old pipes back then. In the old days, when they put this stuff in, they basically drilled a hole, put a pipe in it, welded it to it. No shut-off valve, so we had to trace it all the way back 
to where we was at earlier over here. Now we had to shut some valves off. Then we was trying to relieve the pressure off that line so that we didn't have to shut down the equipment because there was no other cutoff valve. And essentially you could crack open a return tank line so that you could kind of, you know, circulate the water out of that into that tank over there. And then the tank started doing this number. It started rumbling. You could physically see it move. So shut the valve back off you know i really didn't want to get my ass blown off that ladder from a water tank but <laughs> that's why you be cautious and careful with what you're doing and you have a good line of communication with the people that's working around you that's helping you do stuff that way they know what's going on you know how to approach the situation so you know we went ahead and shut the boiler back off we blew it down a little bit got some of the pressure off of it then we went and opened up one line we let some pressure off of it from the top line and we went to the other side and we opened up the pressure into the tank and then we once again let some pressure off the boiler lines we just kind of done that in rotation until it got down to a safe pressure because these water tanks and stuff and all these boilers and everything they all got different gauges on them so you can tell exactly what they're doing as far as the boiler goes it's got a boiler pressure gauge that's your steam pressure it's got a gas gauge up top plus we had a gas gauge over here that i showed you a second ago that we put in and then there's a gauge on the back of this tank such as right there what it is reading and it tells you the heat index on it so whenever you got that thermostat up and it's it goes from like 30 to 230 within like 15 seconds there's a problem otherwise we had other problems as soon as that happened because we have a 1969 boiler that we was running and we got it going we had a few small issues throughout the day with the water tank so you know we ended up having to take our electrical box here rewire it fix it up because it was kicking out we had to put brand new uh pipes right here and stuff because it was leaking like hell and then up there I'll just go ahead and show you. Up there, we had some issue with the boiler pressure, so we hooked up some new lines and made sure that had all the, the right gas. I said boiler pressure, but I meant gas pressure. So we can read the gas from right here. We see how much gas is coming through the main line, going all the way down into the other two boilers, plus this one. So that is all out of the way. We got all that fixed today. And then we were sitting down there, me and this older gentleman who has done repairs like this for a while. And, uh, you know, I was like, what are we going to do to fix this other boiler because right now it has a gas problem too it'll run for 10 minutes and then it'll kick out and you got to go pull the plunger and all that good stuff get the damn thing started again kick out again 15 minutes later so it's got issues going on that we're getting ready to look into also but i'd be damned if we wasn't sitting there talking about it and then hear a big pop sound and psh, as you can see here um, Damn if we ain't having a bad day. But like I said, if you want to see these tools in action, you want to see things hold up that I use that I have reviewed on this channel, well, subscribe to it.